Tom, Evan, how you doing? Good, good, man. How are you? Good. I'm good. It's a pleasure to speak with you both. The movie was fun. You guys were, were good. It was scary. You guys killed it oh, in cool. your roles, no pun intended. Um, hmm. And I'm curious because we're all kind of close enough in age, I think, to have, a, to have had similar experiences if we experienced Resident Evil when it was new for the first time. I love to hear from you guys. Do you remember? Because I was too scared. I played it for the first time. I turned it off. I called my mom. I was like, we got to get Mario instead. And then I revisited <laughs> it later when I was older and braver. Do you guys remember kind of your first introduction to it? Did you have a similar experience? Tom, I'll go to you first with that one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. How, how old are you? I'm 29. Ah, right. Because I'm 36. So I was like, I was like uh, 11, oh, I think. Or, yeah. yeah, probably like 11 or 12 when um, I first played the game. And, and yeah, like yourself, like I, it was my first experience of being scared while playing a game. I said, uh, you know, before that, I suppose like Doom was before that and uh, Wolfenstein and those kind of games. But it was the first one like where, because, you know, you play these games thinking, oh, it's like quite intense, but you had no idea that you're actually going to be properly scared. You know, I'd barely watched any horror movies at that point. So to, to have that experience <laughs> where you're actually in control of the game was uh, was defining, you know, it was genre defining, really. Yeah, my yeah, mom still uh, makes fun of me, me like, for it to this day. Sorry, go ahead, Evan. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, I, you know, everyone has this. The thing about Resident Evil is it's multi-generational, right? Like it, there's, there's so many different versions of people getting into uh, the games and just in general into um you know, I I was re I Resident Evil Four is my game. That's the one that I grew up with and got into. Um, I remember playing two. I remember playing one, but vaguely. But everyone has this sort of memory, who's around our age or, or even 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 young. Everyone uh, of like being over at someone's house. It's like two o'clock in the morning. You're like three sodas deep. You know, you're caffeinated, and you're like don't want to turn the corner in Resident Evil. And your friend, you give the you give your you give the control over to your friend, and he does the you know I me mean? like. Like just being a little, you know, that's that to me is like those are the memories that people have of Resident Evil is that that fear, you know, that and and that's what I think, you know, when we wait when when Johannes went to go make the movie, he really was like I think very aware of like that is the thing that is culturally significant about this particular IP or this, you know, what does it mean to Resident Evil? That's what Resident Evil means. So he just concentrated on the horror, and he's a horror guy himself, and uh, that's that's all over the DNA of the film. Yeah, yeah. You, it comes through. The, the game homage really comes through, and I appreciate that you guys included all that stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, Avin, your character, your, your Leon, seems to be the character who, if you look at it from, like, the audience lens, he has the closest perspective to what we're feeling, like being caught off guard by everything that's yeah. going on. I'd love to yeah. hear from you. What was kind of your moment on set that you were like, oh, this is, we're in this now? Because it does click for Leon. I want to hear yeah. when it clicked for you, too, that you were surrounded by this immersive world. Uh, you know, it's funny because we shot it in sort of a similar order, like we shot the beginning parts of the film at the beginning of the production. So I was like, not in the Leon outfit. I was just dressed as like a cop and um, uh, doing scenes. And I was like, what is this, am I, are we doing it? Like I, I was, you know, I, I was, wasn't sure. Maybe the first, like, you know, as, as I am on almost every project I've ever been on the first, like, you know, three days or four days, I was just like, I don't know, you know, if I'm, if I'm in it yet. And then, um, or, or I, 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 I don't, I don't like, I don't, you know, I'm not there yet. You know, as far as like my experience with it, not not the, the movie was going great. I just my experience with it. Um, and then you know, day four hit, and I you know I got the cutoff gloves and I got the armor on, and you know I got I got now he's got a gun, he's got it out, he's pointing it at zombies, he's got the flashlight, he's got the Leon pose, and I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, now we're now we're cooking with gas. You know, I feel like um, uh, I feel uh, I, f I felt like a, that's when it like sort of clicked for me. Yeah, that was my, the way you guys nailed some of that imagery, some of the poses, the costumes, the attitudes, these characters, that, those are some of my favorite things in the movie. And Tom, yeah. listen, I'm a, I'm a big uh, comic book fan. You're no stranger to comic book adaptations. You've done Umbrella Academy. Now you're adapting a video game. I said the same thing to Robbie because I think my favorite comic book character of all time, Nova, is a character both of you would be good fits for. Have you ever uh, oh. dabbled in, uh, in a, a, a thought of that? Because there are fans who want you in that role. I'm one of them. I'd love to hear your thoughts on like a Marvel DC or just specifically Nova, because that's a great, cool character. Hang on. I want to look him up. You're finding Nova, this out for the first time. If he ends up being cast as Nova, because he, after this interview, goes and calls his agent. Oh, I've seen this guy. I got, I got his helmet on the wall over here. 
Yeah. If he does that, then you you have to come be his onset advisor, his his uh, comic book liaison. No, uh, is uh, is Marvel right? Is it Marvel? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, well, he's not been done yet. So that I mean, you know, what? I'm going to do my research on him now. Yeah, man, get it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, there's. I, d- I don't know anything about him, so I couldn't actually comment yet, but I'd like to comment once I've uh, done some research on him. There's, a, there's can, uh, a few things Robbie, that get... You and Robbie can battle it out for that for that part. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, I'd be interested to see Robbie in that character just from an entertainment perspective. I think it'd be, I think it'd be very good. <laughs> What's up, dude? Nice to talk to you, Robbie. How are you, man? Hey, you too. I'm good, man. How are you? I'm great, dude. I got to see this movie. It's scary. It's fun. You, I thought you did a really great job, man. And so... I actually, we're very close in age. And I remember my introduction to Resident Evil in the 90s. As a game, I was too young to be brave to play it, man. It scared me. Really severely scared me. I want to know, like, did you have a similar experience? Because we kind of grew up in that same era. I was too young to be playing the game. And I made the mistake of playing the game. And one of my earliest video game memories is sitting in the basement and the dogs jumping through the window and just scaring the hell out of me. And I think I was like nine at the time. Like it was, it was really dumb, but I grew up playing hockey and video games and both my parents worked. So I probably wasn't as supervised as I should have been. <laughs> Between the dogs. And there was one scene where like one of the monsters comes crashing through a wall. I was just like, I can't, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, but, it's a uh, lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But so clearly you're familiar with the games and I really love that. And I think I've heard you talk about it and stuff and it comes through in the film um, and from your costume to your attitude, like you look like Chris, it's really cool to see homages to the game in such an immersive, immersive way. Did you take anything from the games? You said, I want to do this. Or was like there any direction that you got that was like, Hey, you know, we want to kind of do it this way, but also make something new here. Well, I felt, I felt really good just about the amount of hours I've played as Chris Redfield and and spent in the Resident Evil world. And then I met with Johannes and it was obvious that he was a huge fan and super passionate about adapting Resident Evil 1 and 2. And uh, uh, I just felt very confident in the version that he put on the page. And, you know, what I thought he did so well was he took these characters that are, uh, you know, a little bit one dimensional in in the video games and, and, you know, fleshed them out and made them more human and and gave them flaws and built their relationships and and really made it so you actually care about these people because at the end of the day if you don't care about these characters it doesn't matter how much it looks like a cutscene from the movie you're going to lose the audience so i i just felt really good about you know as an actor playing the version of chris that you know it has some regrets and 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 you know you know has some 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 flaws and and probably should have moved out of the city, but can't bring himself to do it. And then getting to kill a bunch of zombies as, you know, that Chris Redfield, I knew that was coming. So it was, it was pretty cool. I love how the movies like movies like this and other zombie movies never call zombie zombies. Did you guys have a name for like the infected people on the set? Oh man. I don't think so. I think we just called them zombies, but, but I, I could be wrong. If we were shooting during COVID, so like protocols were very weird. So like nobody, nobody cared if you were a zombie or a, an actor or what. It was just like everybody had to be in their certain bubbles. And like it was more about, you know, containing a real virus, not the T virus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything from the film, but there are definitely – seeds planted this is one of those movies you got to stay all the way through to the end about what could be coming if we do get a sequel down the road when you signed on for the film to play chris obviously their story laid out in in games and books did they give you just one movie or was this kind of like a well here's the first movie we do have ideas here's the overarching possibility of what could come next uh when when you were discussing the film at at, like your first conversations um it is it was currently or it was built as a, a single movie. But with that being said, I mean, the only thing that matters is if the movie does well. So if the movie does well, I think they'll want a sequel. I know. I mean, you know, the story ends with a sequel, you know, being teed up. I know that uh, Johannes has talked about Code Veronica and Resident Evil 4 as things that he would want to adapt. And I would love to continue playing Chris. This was a dream come true for me. Dude, I'm happy to see you succeed and get another franchise uh, right here. And I'm, I'm excited. I hope it gets to continue. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a huge comic book fan. It's no secret. You look around my room here. 
I loved you as Firestorm as well. And we're on the precipice Thanks. of like the DC world going into multiverse stuff. Do you think those comic book days are totally behind you? Do you think there's any chance like, I mean, Michael Keaton's back. So I feel like anything's possible, but it's the obligatory question of, will you ever do it again? Have you, do you like text them and say like, Hey, you know, you got anything for me? Can we do this again? Or anything like you that? know, you're, you're never really dead in that universe. So uh, I would love to go back. I'm, I'm currently shooting a, a movie in Toronto right now. So a lot of it is just kind of schedule based and I've got a two year old son now. So it's one of those things of just balancing life and work, but uh, I love everyone over there. I think they're in their final season of season eight or, or close to it or, you know, something like that. But uh, you know, I, I love everyone over there. I stay in touch with them. Danielle is, is amazing. She has a son who's, who's just a little bit younger than mine. And uh, I would love to go back. So we'll see. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm this is my first interview of the day, so I'm I'm a lot fresher than you probably are doing this all all day. I can imagine. Yeah, it's been all right. It's been a, a lot of fun actually. It's been a good one. Oh, good to hear. Good to hear. Well, I'm excited to talk with you about it. Honestly, Resident Evil. I'm going to be honest with you. This is probably the first franchise that really scared me ever because I remember playing the game as a kid. Mm-hmm. I was too scared to play it. I told my mom, I was like, I need to get a new game. We went and got Super Smash Brothers. And then I tried to read the book anyway. And I got like 10 pages in and like somebody got a chunk of their body bitten out. And then my imagination went crazy. Couldn't do it. What was the first franchise that ever scared you? That You remember really leaving a mark. It wasn't Resident Evil. And if not, I'd love to hear what it was. It wasn't Resident Evil. It was, it was, I watched, oh, does The Exorcist count as a franchise? I feel like it does, right? I, yeah, I, I think so. I watched that when I was way too young. It was my eighth birthday sleepover. And it came on the TV and we all watched it. And my mom got in so much trouble from the other parents. She got called into the school because like four of them were traumatized. Um, and yeah, it really messed me up. It was a bad, bad sleepover. And um, so yeah, I still can't watch it to this day. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> The sleepover where none of the kids slept for, for the yeah, rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives, exactly. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, very early in this movie, to me, the scariest moment comes, and I don't want to spoil anything by getting too specific, but there's a woman who comes slamming through glass and charging towards you. I want to hear about that day on set. Like, how many times did that have to happen? Was it like, that seems like it could actually be genuinely like a pretty scary moment. Yeah, totally. The whole film kind of felt like that because we shot the whole thing at night. So for three months, we didn't see daylight. Um, it was during the pandemic. It was in freezing cold Canada. So we were all a bit on edge and a little bit anxious to begin with. Um, and I I do have quite a vivid imagination. So on that day, I do remember being very, very freaked out um, until I went to go to the porta potty to go to the toilet and I saw her queuing up. And then I was kind of like, okay, you're just a person. Everything is all right. <laughs> That's funny. I've been, I've been a zombie on The Walking Dead and I've seen the zombies. They even recognize each other with all of their makeup. They were like, hey, Nick, hey, Jenna. That's it's pretty cool. It's pretty surreal when you see those people, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I would make friends with the stunt guys and then suddenly they'd be in makeup and I wouldn't want to talk to them. And I'd be like, sorry, Gary, not today. <laughs> I don't want to be around you. I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> That's amazing. And from, from your costume to your portrayal of Claire, uh, you really bring this character to life in a way that pays homage to Claire that video game fans are going to recognize. Like you look like her, you sound like her. It's really cool to see that. Did you take it like, did you have to go look at anything to do research for the, that style? Or did they just kind of give you like notes? Like this is the way it went in the game or in the book. And we want to see this brought to life. No, I definitely did a lot, a lot of research on my own to begin with. And, and I'm lucky in that, there has been so many different incarnations of Claire. There isn't kind of one structure of her. But what was cool about that is that it gave me the opportunity to go through each one, kind of take different elements. What's the funniest thing about this one? What's the most interesting? Uh, you know, what look kind of resonates the most with the fans? And I wanted to build almost like an ultimate Claire out of all the different versions of her out there. Um, and one that I knew the fans would kind of love and, and recognize. And so that was kind of my mentality for it. Obviously, there's certain things that you can't directly translate, unfortunately. You know, the ponytail was a big deal, but any girl will tell you that a ponytail in the rain in film does not look cute. So there's certain things that you've just got to change because it is a different medium. Um, but we, I definitely tried to build her for the fans and build her out of the expectations that the fans had before. I think you did a really cool job and you made it a badass character that we could really root for. Um, and so I'm not going to spoil anything again, but 
throughout the film, especially towards the end, there are some seeds planted that seem like there are plans for, for future installments. I'd love to hear when you came on board for Claire, did they kind of map out like an overarching story that goes through multiple films? Or is that a discussion that starts later? That's a discussion that starts later with this one. I, I, I think we really kind of wanted to focus on getting this one right and finding the balance of survival horror that we haven't seen in film adaptations of Resident Evil before. Um, so we kind of have all our resources in the moment into that. Um, and then, you know, shooting during a pandemic, it was sort of really rough and tumble and, and we were just trying to get it done. Um, but now it's exciting because we're seeing the reactions. We're seeing that people really like it. And, you know, I would love to come back. I think Claire's got so much more to do. She's not finished at all. Yo, Han, it's my pleasure to talk with you. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very good. I'm just looking at your background to see everything oh. there. We, yeah, we, could, okay. we could fill the whole interview yeah, 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 yeah. talking about all of this stuff. I, I take pride in this room. Yeah. Uh, and like it's it. always growing. I got to get some Resident Evil stuff in here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You need, oh, man. you need a big tyrant head somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> scare the kids yeah. oh man but dude, actually that's actually where i want to start because i was i've talked to all the cast members about my first time playing resident evil i think i was like nine years old when those games started coming out and i think i played the first one on playstation 2 and then gamecube and in both instances my mom still makes fun of me i was too scared to play them she yeah. was why'd you yeah. buy this game i told you you weren't yeah. going to get through it do you remember like did you have a similar introduction what was it like for you the first time you got to play these games yeah well i didn't like so this was i was never a gamer uh, um, and then the PlayStation came out and it kind of made gaming cool. And I was a student and it was a very weird time in that I was always like a super big horror nerd. But all the all the stuff that I was into was just not cool anymore. It was, it, it was, it was you know, I was having to travel miles to go and see In the Mouth of Madness, you know, just go and see Carpenter's new one that, that three people went to see, you know, or, or, you know, and Scream was big and I didn't, I didn't get Scream, you know, it was all winking at the camera and I felt horror was in a weird place and I didn't get it. And then suddenly this game came out that was in love with everything that I was in love with, like was in love with Romero. You know, people had forgotten him, Romero hadn't worked for de- <laughs> for ages. And it was like, mm-hmm. loved all this kind of stuff that I had grown up on. And I was like, I'd watch people play this and it was just terrifying. And that's how I got into it. I, I was a, I was like a, sort of uh, a voyeur and then and then through that started started playing the game and started getting into the whole Resident Evil world and you know I, now I'm like an adult junkie of it all like I, you know, I, how, how cool is it that you got into it that way it really fulfilled things that you were loving and now you get to direct the movie that is so cool dude I'm happy for you <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's so much fun like and so you know I, I'm a sucker for like clearly you see that Marvel DC Harry Potter stuff all around me I'm a sucker for Easter eggs and homage and anything when it's brought from like a source material into something. And this movie feels like one big homage. You put so many, like the whole movie is Easter eggs to the game. (laughs) Was there anything that was like just particularly difficult or you just couldn't get away with including for whatever reason, like what were some of the hardest parts of that? Yeah. I mean, there was a couple of things like I, I jokingly said to you about, you needed a big tyrant head. But we, I wanted, I love like, I'm obsessed with the, the reboot of the second game. Uh, and I, we talked a lot about whether we should have the tyrant in the movie or not. And in the end, we decided it just didn't, it just didn't totally fit. At some points it was in, some points it wasn't, some points it was in. And in the end, we decided not to go with it. And so I at least wanted a nod to it. And I had in, in, in the, I had a tyrant head in a, a built like full, full dimension, like huge head built, put into a, like a specimen jar that was in the back of, Birkin's lab in the in the cold uh, storage room, and I never shot it right. <laughs> Built this uh-huh. fucking thing, and I never shot it right. And and I just so when we came to editing, I could never use the shots with it in. So it's it's it will forever be just off, just oh, off camera. I think you can see an ear, uh, 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 but that's it. So I and I loved you know I would have loved to put the tire in. I would have loved to put as a as a shark guy. I would have loved to put a zombie shark in as well. But you know. <laughs> maybe like, maybe soon. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, hey man hopefully you get around two here yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I know you clear like there's definitely i'm not going to spoil anything but there are kind of scenes that that imply that you know you have ideas and the stories yeah. have ideas for what's next um when you when you talk to the cast or when you pitched this or, or when it was pitched to you did you kind of already have an arc in mind or are you kind of like 
you like, this is obviously where it goes. Maybe we'll explore what fans <laughs> like it. Have you started thinking about that stuff? It, it's been kicked around. Um, I think, I think with these things, you always have to wait and see, you know, how people mm-hmm. respond, etc. cetera. Um, I think the 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 core belief that sort of permeated this whole movie, that making this whole movie and how I directed the cast, the one direction I really gave them, and the same with the crew or, you know, my DP, whatever, uh, was fall in love with the game. Fall in love with the game. We don't need to, we'll, we'll put in loads of Easter eggs and stuff, but, you know, we don't need to be identical. We're not just putting the game on screen, but what mm-hmm. I want is I want love from you. So whether people like the movie or don't like the movie, I want I want people to feel that it comes from the right place. So it, it we we have just embraced it all, and that that was really what I told everybody to to do, and that's what I would love to do continuing on. So rather than I I would love to not just like okay here we've set up our characters now we've done our world building let's throw out the game and just take it off our own way i would love to now i'm obsessed with the fourth game i love code veronica i you know i mean it's kind of slightly different universe ish kind of world thing but resident evil 7 is terrifying you know there's there's so much uh interesting stuff in the in the in the um, Resident Evil world and you know we've got to have Chris Redfield punching a boulder at some point so um, uh, you know there's, there's 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 a lot that I want to put in oh yeah you could use the uh, you could use the glove uh, <laughs> you got to get the big fella coming through the wall yeah, yeah. I was I was like on edge the whole movie waiting for that too I know you're going to do it down the yeah. road man <laughs> 